Hello everybody, this is Petey from Bergstar Arcade at bergstararcade.com and here we are again with another tutorial on NGUI. So let's go ahead and open up our Unity project. And where we left off, uh, we've got the cube working and when we hit the driver, sure enough it's spawning the text we want. But you notice that after it's done tweeting going upwards, it uh, just appears above the cube again and it's not destroying. So I wanted to take care of that first. And to do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up the script. Now, normally I'd just go ahead and set a variable. Whoops, sorry, the scripts are down here. Usually I'd just come into floating text and I'd go ahead and set some sort of float variable up to destroy uh, the object at a certain amount of time, after a certain amount of time. Uh, but if you take a look at the tween, you actually have a field here available to you to call when your tween is done. And this is actually what, what I'm going to use to. Uh, destroy my game object after. So I'm going to start off. I'm going to come down and I'm going to go right above. Um, so let's go right above late update. And I'm just going to make a public void and I'm going to say destroy me. And this is just simply a function I want to call to, well, destroy the game object. So I'm going to start off the debug log just so I know it's being called. And destroy me. Okay, and I'm also going to go ahead and actually call the destroy as well. So destroy, and what we want to destroy, which should be this game object. And that should be it for that. Now we're going to have to come over to our floating text, and we're going to have to access that property um, of our floating text. So I'm going to say tp. I believe it was call when finished yet, yeah, right here. Now it wants a string, and the string is just the name of the method that we made, and I called mine destroy me. You can call it whatever you want. You can even have multiple ones uh, that you want to go off. And for now, I'm just going to go with that one, destroy me. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And if I come back in, I will hit start. Go ahead, hit the driver. It floats up. Keep an eye. And there we go. When it's done, it's called destroy me. But now we're going to run into the problem that when we try it again, we're going to keep getting this error saying a missing reference. And if we go ahead and we take a look, it's this line right here where it's trying to instantiate the flowing text. And it's because we've actually set the FT to be uh, equal to this, whatever we're instantiating. And then when it gets destroyed, we actually have nothing left to instantiate. So we're going to want to fix that. All we're going to do is come up here and change the FT to prefab or anything uh, you want. I'm just going to call it prefab because that's you know what it does is represent a prefab. And down here in the instantiate command, I'll also call it prefab. Now I got a message in one of the other videos that we're not supposed to actually instantiate. We're supposed to use uh, NGUI tools. And right here, dot add child. Now this works great in the paid version, uh, but in this free version, uh, there's two different uh, ways to do it, and neither one allows me to send the parent in, or sorry, send the child in, only the parent. And you can build it up by adding the scripts you want to it. Uh, but I had a little bit of trouble with it in the free version, so for now, I'm just going to stick with the instantiate command. And when we go ahead and take a look at floating sprites, you'll see that there's quite a bit that we can... Uh, refactor out of both scripts to uh, make a base script and that's what we'll do then. So I'm going to go ahead, uh, well, we'll have to fix that, but first I want to go ahead and set the prefab over here since we changed the name. Uh, actually I got to fix the error first. And we'll do that just by saying floating, uh, spell it right, floating text, there we go. And we'll go ahead and head back into Unity. That should fix that. We'll go ahead and clear this. Uh, now we have the prefab variable. We'll go ahead, we'll select our prefab, go put it on. I'll go ahead, hit start. And there we go, it's still spawning. I uh, will go ahead, we'll let them die off. And when we start it up again, uh, there we go. Uh, so the next thing I want to address is, you notice how it's always starting off in the center? 
I want it to start off uh, right above wherever the cube is. And that will be the next thing we work on. Uh, before we do that, I wanted to head over to the documentation. And here's the documentation for it. If we go ahead and take a look here at the NGUI tools, the add child. Uh, this is the one we have access to. Uh, this is the one that I've been playing around with in the paid version, which works great. Uh, we also have this one here. Uh, again, I've played around with it. Not really what I want. Uh, I, I want to be able to pass the child. I want to be able to actually just uh, send a prefab in. And right now in the free version, you can't do that. And since the free version actually is not supported anymore, uh, the chances are it won't be added to it. So we're just going to stick with this way for now, at least uh, while we're using the free version. And everything should be fine, but I just wanted to point that out. So we'll head back into our script and I'm going to come over to our floating text. And let me see, following here, I'm going to switch this back to a public. Uh, just so we can call this to uh, make our script go ahead and actually calculate the position that it's supposed to be in uh, if it was following. Now I don't want it to actually follow. I just want it to basically for that one frame get where the position should be. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I come into uh, our driver here. And I'm going to come down just under duration where I'm actually setting the from and to position. And we're going to do things a little bit different here. So I'm going to come in. And the from position, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab, uh, well, actually, before I do any of this, what I want to do is actually call uh, FT, which is for our floating text, and the following, the one that we just made public. That way there we know where we should be. So it's going to be setting its transform properly. So I'm going to say FT dot transform dot, and actually what we want to get is the local position. And then for our two position, I, I just want it to float upwards. So what I'm going to say is go ahead and grab our TP dot from. So basically where we're moving from. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a vector three. Uh, I'm going to see vector three dot up position or the direction I want it to go in. And that only adds once. I want it to be a little bit bigger than before. And I think we were using 100. So we're going to go ahead and save that off. Uh, we'll go check, see if any errors pop up. Uh, we have none, so I'll clear it. Uh, let's actually start it before I hit the driver button. And now when I hit, it's actually spawning where it's supposed to. And as we can see, they're also being destroyed. Uh, but I think that's pretty much it for the, the text. Now you could actually go ahead and add, well, uh, it, you could go on play around with the driver a bit more, add something, some sort of randomness to what it's displaying. Uh, but it's just a string being passed in, so it really doesn't matter. The, the driver isn't the, the, the big concern here. It's the uh, floating text class. But anyway, that's pretty much all I can think of that I wanted to cover in uh, this little mini-series here. Next, we're going to go on to actually floating sprites. So something like a little... Uh, quest icon above uh, NPC heads. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's pretty similar to this, so it should be pretty quick. And I'll see you in that video. Bye-bye.